Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Investors Bank, the Russell Berry Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, and by Kessler Foundation, changing the lives of people with disabilities. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. First, I want to welcome you to the Bellevue Theater. This is the third annual Montclair Film Festival, and in and of itself, that deserves a tremendous round of applause. The third annual Montclair Film Festival. This is the premiere of a uh, tremendous film called The Rule. And it speaks for itself. In just a few minutes, you'll see it. And it is very important before we see the film. And I promise you, other than, I mean, there are many other times I've been here at the Bellevue, you have to sit through a whole range of previews <laughs> that you do not want to see. Father Edwin, we are not watching the previews tonight. There will not be any previews. We'll go right to the rule, but I will have to do this because it's necessary because a film festival like this does not just happen, just like the work at St. Benedict's Prep does not just happen. A lot of hard work is involved. And so, folks, I want you to join me in thanking our signature sponsor, Investor Bank. Put your hands together. It takes money to go with the mission. Our presenting sponsors, Audible, Audi, and Horizon Foundation for New Jersey. Put your hands together for our presenting sponsors. Our leadership sponsors, Chubb, Caldwell, Banker, Residential Brokerage, and Hackensack, UMC, Mountainside. Please thank all of our leadership sponsors. And the other thing I want to say is you will see some folks who are walking around, working very hard. They have yellow t-shirts, and that represents the over 1,000 volunteers working hard every day leading up to this film festival, the 1,000 volunteers strong of the Montclair Film Festival, all of our volunteers who work tirelessly, let's say thank you to them. <laughs> Tonight's film, The Rule by Mary Lou and Jerome Bongiorno, is co-presented by the production company that I'm proud to head up. It is called the Caucus Educational Corporation, and we are a media sponsor of the film festival, together with our partners in public broadcasting, WNET, Channel 13, the PBS flagship in New York City, and the New Jersey public broadcasting station, NJTV. We are proud to be a part of this film festival. I'm Mary Lou Bongiorno. My husband Jerome and I are filmmakers who have made Newark, New Jersey our home for many years. Newark is a great city, but it has huge problems. Nearly a third of our population lives in poverty, the crime rate is high, and the graduation rate is low. While searching for solutions, we were introduced to a place in the heart of the city called Newark Abbey. It's a 150-year-old monastery run by monks who wear black robes as they did in the sixth century. They operate a school 11 months of the year for 550 inner city boys. <laughs> we found that even though many of these kids come from poor families, the school has a nearly 100% college acceptance rate. So we met with the monks, and one of the first things they told us was that long ago they realized that inner city kids need special elements not found in traditional schools, and that those elements are part of a 1,500-year-old monastic handbook called The Rule. Steve Adubato here at the uh, Bellevue Theater. Montclair Film Festival, we're here for the opening of a really terrific documentary called The Rule. And we're here with the uh, filmmakers, Mary Lou and Jerome Bongiorno. Um, let me ask you, Mary Lou, this film, The Rule. First of all, what rule are we talking about and what terrific institution are we talking about? We're talking about St. Benedict's Prep. And the rule is the rule of St. Benedict, 
uh, which is the order that the Benedictine monks belong to. So this is an amazing place, and, and we're thrilled to be presenting this here. We're talking about St. Benedict's Prep in the heart of uh, Newark, New Jersey. A terrific story about a place that um, a lot of folks outside of Newark may not know, but after this film they will know. Um, where young people, disproportionately black and Hispanic, young men, are educated in a way that um, really makes a difference in their lives and in the lives of a lot of other people they touch afterwards. Jerome, why make this documentary? Well, we live in Newark, and Newark's got you know, a lot of problems. One of the biggest problems is its poverty rate. We're almost 32% poverty rate, which is like 90,000 people in poverty. And so these kids live in poverty. Many of these kids, not all of them, many of these kids come from a poverty environment. And that, that, that brings a lot of baggage with them to schools. And this school helps get them, get that baggage off their shoulders. Mary Lou, describe who you spoke to what you got back and how much access you had at uh, St. Benedict's? Well, um, the monks lifted cloister for a woman, so I had complete access into... Describe that for folks so they, who really don't understand what kind of life we're talking about and what kind of uh, decision that was to lift that for you. Um, this is a Benedictine Abbey, so it's a group of men who are seeking God. And they live not in complete cloister, but their living space is closed off to women. So for them to lift that and give us access into their, um, their sacred space was pretty amazing. Uh, and so it gave us the ability to really penetrate and see what their lives are like. And the five times a day that they pray collectively while they attend to these kids, which um, really occupies a great deal of their time. Describe that connection with those kids. The connection is one that we try to distill into 12 elements. Um, that's everything from counseling to commitment, stability, adaptability, all modern versions of what the rule of Benedict is really about. These kids are not all Catholic. In fact, many of them are not Catholic. Talk about that, Jerome. Yeah, the, the, the need for these kids to be Catholic or the same faith as the monks, it doesn't matter because with the monks it's about community, it's about commitment, and that's what they're giving these kids. So they don't have to be of the same religion as the monks. And spirituality. Talk spirituality. about spirituality. Um, spirituality. One of the monks in the film uh, actually makes that distinction, that you don't have to be religious, but they do try to impart a spiritual for example, give us a, don't give away too much of the film, but give us a concrete example of the kind of spirituality you're talking about, Mary Lou. Connectedness. Uh, that's Father Matthew's big point in the film. It's about forming connections. And those connections tie into their motto, which is whatever hurts my brother hurts me, which also means whatever helps my brother helps me. So it's the idea of community. And I think you'll see Father Edwin and Ivan Lamore. Father Edwin Leahy, who is the headmaster. Yes, uh, who is the dynamic headmaster and personification of the rule for us. Um, and, and all of the other monks and all of the staff and faculty who have worked so hard to build this kind of connectedness amongst them. Tron, what was it like when you actually got to talk to the uh, young men at St. Benedict's Prep? Well, the place is a big deal for them. For a lot of them, it gives them a sense of community. It gives them a, a, a sense of role model. It gives them a sense of stability, safety, comfort. And so many of them appreciate it. And so, you know, you see this on their face. And, and, and when you're a person who wants to make a movie about something that's important, it, you know, it's, it's all right there for you. And, and at that place, it's there for you 24 hours a day. You cannot put down the camera. Hello, everyone. You're probably wondering why I'm standing in front of you today. Three and a half years ago, you wouldn't have heard me being accepted into the National Honor Society. You wouldn't have thought I would make it in the school to see graduation. Sad to say, but the only thing you would hear concerning me was that I was one of the most angry freshmen in the school. And the only time you would hear my name is when I had a fight. In the beginning, I went to my anger counselor with no intentions of talking. But after a while, I just began to open up and trust her enough to talk to her. At first, I never knew why I was so angry. It didn't take long for both of us to discover I was angry at my father. As a child, I went through things like living in motels because I was homeless and no one, not even my family members, wanted to take in a family of seven. And when we did finally have a home, I went through things like living in darkness or without running water. I went through things like my father also being a very angry man and taking his anger out on me physically in ways like almost choking me to death, beating me up, leaving me with swollen lips or a swollen eye or something like being beat with an extension cord, leaving welts that would be there for a week. These kids live in in a house of horrors sometimes in their neighborhoods. 
Father Edwin has been with us many times in public broadcasting, um, talking about St. Benedict's Prep, but more importantly, talking about the challenge of educating young men in the city of Newark. But it's the first time we've talked to you in connection with a uh, feature film like this. Your reaction to it? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's an opportunity, I think, for the, to let people know uh, what, the, what the kids in the city are capable of doing. Uh, if you give them the opportunity. So, I mean, I've never had the experience before, so it's new to me. I'm, I'm, it'll, uh, I'll be able to give you more of my reaction, I think, after we go through the process of seeing the movie and seeing people's reaction to it. But uh, my hope is it's an opportunity for, uh, for the kids in Newark to, uh, to shine, so to speak, and to let, uh, let other folks know that what they're capable of doing. Just because people were born in the zip codes of one, uh, 07102 or 07103, um, that doesn't mean that they're not capable, they're not super talented, and uh, I hope this gets an opportunity for them to, uh, to show people what they're capable of doing. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? What activity are you in? What activity are you in? Uh, you're stuttering. You've got to be at practice every day. This is not some, some rich prep school somewhere where guys go when they want. That is not happening. Why aren't you in an activity? What? Ivan. Puerto Rican? Lives on Sylvan, up by you. Oh, yeah. Can't be in an activity because his mother's not able to come and get him. What? Go home with him. Go home with me. Monday, bring shorts and a t-shirt. All right? And I want you to practice. We'll figure out how to get you home. Father Ed realizes how desperate the situation is, and that's something he lives with all the time. I get to go home. I get to go home to my wife, my three dogs, and my cat. Father Ed is home. This is their home. For those who don't know what you do at St. Benedict's Prep, describe it. That's, I try to ask myself that question <laughs> often. Um, I run all the psychological services at the school, so when the kids are having difficulties in academics, as opposed to going after them in a, in a disciplined way, we try to figure out what the issues are and try to figure out how to help them overcome whatever psychological issues are occurring with them. You know, I asked Father Edwin Leahy, who is the headmaster, uh, the leader at St. Benedict's Prep, this question about the impact of having filmmakers in uh, the school and also in a monastery as well. Uh, what was it like for you and your colleagues to have Mary Lou and Jerome Bongiorno in there, in the school, shooting, making this film? Did it have any impact on, on the work? It, 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 it actually did. Um, I know a lot of people that actually avoided them, myself included, so we, because we weren't sure. And slowly they just kind of worked themselves into the fabric of the place. They embedded themselves. They embedded themselves, that's true. And when we found out that the abbot gave them access to the monastery, which is really, it's unprecedented. At that point, we started to kind of relate to them a little bit more. And as they started to kind of talk to us in a way that, that, that helped us to tell our story, they, they became like family. I mean, I've asked this of others, I'll ask this of you. The young men at St. Benedict's Prep are very special young men who face some real challenges but accomplish extraordinary things. Who are these young men? These young men are kids that come from Newark, East Orange, Irvington. These are young men that come from all over the world. They're capable young men. They're great kids. It's, we're proud to say that we send our kids to the best schools in the country. Sometimes you have to work with a kid and work a little harder to help him realize his, his self-worth. And that becomes part of it. We're talking about kids that are disenfranchised. When, when Define that. They don't belong to anything. And, and their parents are so afraid to let them be on the streets that they tell them, don't get involved. Don't get involved. So now the message is clear. I won't get involved in my community. I'll stay home. What do they face on the streets? Drugs, crime, gangs right now is the number one issue. Broken families. It's, it's, it's almost passe to say, but it's had such an impact on American culture now. Kid, men not being raised by fathers. It's, it's, it's a tremendous psychosocial issue. Finally, how proud are you, not just of this film, but of your students? Words are real, are real difficult for me because I see myself in them. You're a graduate of yes. St. Benedict's Prep class, 1982. Yes, 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 that's right. And, and it's, it's, I'm so proud of them because every time I see them, it's, it's like, wow, look at you. You've, you're turning into the man that we are all praying that you're going to turn into. New Jersey has spent $12 billion on education in Newark. Does it seem like they've spent $12 billion on education in Newark?
the, the reality is that it, in Newark, it is a violent city. It's real hard to do your math homework when someone's shooting at your window. Real difficult to be able to finish your history project when your mother is shooting heroin in the, in the living room. So now this child is not performing at the level you want him to. We're not talking about cognitive learning disabilities. You're talking about significant emotional issues that impact the kid's ability to be able to think. So if you're able to kind of deal with those issues and, and you're able to help the kid deal with those issues, then they can begin the process of education. But until then, you can tell me whatever you want. If I'm concerned about the fact that I have to get home and I gotta fight off my stepfather who's trying to molest me, it's gonna be real difficult to kind of focus on the, you know, which is gonna be A, a B, or C. Akeem Miller, who is uh, featured in the film The Rule, who is uh, at Kane University right now, um, you were a leader in this film, a senior group leader. Your reaction to the film, The Rule? Uh, the film was very well portrayed. I felt like it covered every aspect of the leadership, um, especially the part where they showed that students were actually in charge and not, and not exactly the headmaster. I mean, it's kind of funny because most schools wouldn't trust the headmaster or, or you know, students to be in charge of, of running a, uh, a school. So I felt they, they portrayed that very well, and I, I'm, I'm very satisfied. I'm very pleased with it. It's so interesting. Akeem talks about the whole idea of student leadership, which was, a, which was a very big theme in the rule. Let me ask you, for people who can't understand or appreciate the idea of students playing such an important role in, in, in managing discipline and managing attendance and doing everything that you and the other students were doing, explain how that works, which, by the way, you can see in the film, The Rule. How does that work? Well, this is how it works. When I first started St. Benedict's, I was a quiet kid. Did not want to talk to anyone. I was in a shell. But it's funny because someone saw potential in me. Someone said, listen, this kid has the potential to be something great. This kid has the potential to be a leader. So closer to my sophomore year, I attained my first leadership uh, position, which was uh, the counselor of an fr incoming freshman group. Um, and they liked how I did that. And they, they recognized I had more potential. So closer to my junior year, I was uh, one of the names on the sheets that went down to becoming uh, the senior group leader of the school. Wasn't that scary? I have to tell you, it was one of the most nervous, scariest things ever. I just kept replaying it in my mind, why me? Why me of, out of uh, 560 odd students in an entire school? Why do you think you? Um, <laughs> you still think about that? I still think about it. I still think about there's 560 odd students in the school, about 113 seniors, and yet they choose one person to lead the entire school. Uh, that, that's incredible. I mean, the decisions they have to make on a daily day basis is, I guess they saw something in, inside of me that I didn't see in myself, and I have to say I'm extremely grateful for St. Benedict's. First thing when I get up in the morning, I'll start thinking about the kids that I have to encounter day by day. So I've dealt with kids who've had a hard time listening, dealt with kids who had a dysfunctional family. It all comes down to them feeling secure. Get in Steve. I was born in Guyana, and I've lived in Newark. Our school is big on brotherhood. So we wouldn't do anything to jeopardize one another's safety. I feel every time I enter the school, I have no problems with thinking someone is, is carrying a weapon on them. When we walk into St. Benedict's, there are no metal detectors because we have that feeling of security already. In our school, we have absolutely no locks in our lockers. The seventh and graders, they're not dismissing through the separate doors no more. We gotta crack down on that. At this point, everybody started throwing away trash and start getting ready for the regular conversation. Other schools have separate homerooms, but at Benedict's, we have one big homeroom. We go into Shanley Gym. Our school is broken up into a group system. Each group has a group leader who is in charge of about 30 students of all different grades and is helped by an assistant group leader and a faculty moderator. There's an assistant group leader for freshmen. The freshmen sit on the floor. A section is four groups. The section leaders are in charge of each section and there are four sections. There's maroon section, white section, blue section, and gray section. 
And then there's the senior group leader, myself, who oversees the whole school. We are here with DDA John Baptiste, who is an administrator at uh, St. Benedict's Prep, the uh, high school in the city of Newark. That is the subject of this film that we're watching. All the folks are coming here tonight for the opening of the film called? The Rule. Yeah, and the rule is a very important rule, isn't it? Yes, the rule of Benedict. It guides everything that's done in the monastery and the structure of the school, too. It shapes how we run the school, too. Give folks an example of that. I mean, I've asked many people about the rule. They can describe what it is, but the manifestation of the rule in real life, describe it. All right. Uh, one example would be that, uh, I mean, we're brothers in the school, and it, the school is family. And just like in the monastery, uh, you know, you, you don't expel someone from the monastery for one mistake. Uh, you admonish them once, maybe twice, a third time. You really work as much as possible to keep someone in the community rather than, you know, kind of three strikes and you're out. Uh, it's uh, trying to preserve, trying to save everyone, trying to get everyone to f find a solution to whatever problems they're going through. Do you really have that attitude that every one of these kids, particularly those who are challenging, uh, challenged in so many ways, the young men in this film, um, uh, black and Hispanic kids in Newark facing, in Newark, in Newark, but they're also come from East Orange, Irvington, Orange, so many of the surrounding communities. They face incredible challenges, obstacles. You believe every one of them can be saved? If they, I mean, it's really in their power to be saved. They have the power. They have the power, absolutely. I mean, they need the structure that allows them to work through their issues if they have them. I mean, we have lots of kids who come from great families, but for those who have issues at home or, you know, in the past haven't achieved their full potential, we feel that if we give them the chance, learn, let them learn from their mistakes, that sure, they can be saved. We are here with Abbot Melvin Valvano, who uh, we are honored to have you with us at the opening of The Rule. How excited are you? Very excited, probably be for self-serving reasons like a good Italian would be. Uh, it's great publicity, and it's uh, the, the concentration on the monastic angle relative to the resurgence, the renaissance of St. Benedict's Prep, is thrilling for me. Describe it, um, that monastic life, if you will, for those who couldn't even, don't even begin to understand what that means. A, a group of Catholic Christian men dedicated to prayer and to helping people. We, at St. Benedict's, teaching kids. And a lifelong commitment. Opening night of the rule, St. Benedict's Prep, we're here with Father Albert, who is, in fact, in this movie. I'm excited about tonight, right? Yes, yes. I've seen pieces of it before, but yeah, it's, it's fun more than anything else. You know, fun? Yeah, well, I don't need the publicity. I don't have an agent, you know. Yeah. But I think it, the reason I'm saying it's fun is because for the past 40 years, we've just been doing our thing, you know, running a school as best we can. And then suddenly the filmmakers come along and say, oh, this is important stuff. This is great stuff. So. And the rule itself in real life at the prep, describe it. Well, the rule, the title of the film, of course, refers to the rule of St. Benedict, which is a rather brief 5th century document that we use, um, Benedictine men and women, still today, uh, not so much to follow as legislation, but it, it's, it governs our heart. You know, the way you look at things, the way you approach things. For example. What's important, what's important in life, for example, you know, for a monk. Uh, the really important stuff isn't the stuff that you can measure or that you can see or the money part of it. So when we're running the school, we just naturally started running the school the same way. So um, what's success, for example? How do you define success for, for the kids? Uh, or um, the value of mistakes. You know, St. Benedict has a, puts a high value on making mistakes because you learn from that. And of course now, our educational psychologists are telling us the same thing. You learn far more from mistakes than you do from doing it right. You know? So the rule just permeates everything that we do, and it's not conscious. It's, uh, it's an approach, a very approach to things. Uh, discipline, I suppose, is a good example of that, that it's not a matter of so much forcing anybody to do things as guiding them cajoling, getting them to see 
what's important. So it's, um, it's our approach, and people sense it. They tell me that when they walk in the building, they say, oh, something different about this place, the family idea. Glenn Cassie, let me ask you, uh, you were in the film, your reaction to it. Uh, I think the film really captures the essence of St. Benedict's. There's a, I was actually, in some ways, uh, I don't know, affirmed, uh, watching a lot of our students in the film, watching what they do, kind of, when you're in it every day, sometimes you don't appreciate it as much, but seeing some of the guys, uh, even in the every day, and watching their reactions to the every day was kind of, it was affirming for me to see that what we're doing is actually working. And Torian, let me ask you, your connection to St. Benedict's. Yeah, so uh, as a graduate of St. Benedict's class when I did nine, it brought back a lot of memories uh, from the backpacking trail, you know, working with Cass and water polo, uh, you know, it, it brought back a lot of memories. And I was even texting my, my classmates, just telling them, you know, we have to see this film, we have to support it, we have to share uh, the memories of St. Benedict's Prep. Why should everyone, whether they are directly connected uh, to and with St. Benedict's or not, see this film? The film tells a great story. Um, the school is a great story in and of itself, but the film tells a great story, not only of how urban education can work and how we can be successful, but also I think everybody should know what's going on in urban America. Uh, it's not the same all across America, but urban America is its own life, and people need to know what it is, what's going on there. And we see in the film uh, the rule, a young man, uh, 500 plus, every day uh, living the rule, the principles of the rule, and it shows reason to have hope. And a lot of, but some of them are lost. Some of them do not succeed. Uh, but we focus on the ones who do. The reason we should have hope is the reason we should have hope is because we we know that everyone uh, has their own hope. Everyone has their own hope of the dreams of wanting to be better, to succeed. And as you heard in the film, uh, they support that through perseverance, um, you know, through uh, living in their own environment and finding ways to be resourceful. Uh, and so we want to support everyone's dreams, everyone's hope to, to succeed, to be great, uh, to be well. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and the Montclair Film Festival, 13 for WNET, and NJTV. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Investors Bank, the Russell Berry Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Kessler Foundation. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger, powering NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.